What's up guys, Vicente here with another quick tutorial, this time on how to make a cutscene. Uh, for this I'll just be using my own project, which I already have a cutscene done in, and I'll show you basically what it looks like. So the player falls down, he turns back and talks, and then you get control. So basically how I accomplish this is you're going to want, well for me, because that's as soon as my uh, game starts during this test demo, I have the uh, action on appearance, my BC falling, which is the beginning cutscene is what it's short for. So ignore spaghetti. Um, so here's basically how you set up a cutscene. Um, you will create an action that you want them to do. So for that I created falling because my character starts in the air in this particular cutscene. So I named it BC falling. We'll just name it BC falling 2. This is what I would set the default to, right? And then basically I want the player to fall and then when they land they're going to roll and then they're going to turn back and look at the character they landed on and say a message and then it's going to go to idle so that the player can get control and then you can add one of these boxes by uh, adding a group box and then you can add actions here as you can see so that's pretty much all you have to do. Now you're going to need different actions when you want the animation to change is basically how I did it. So I have the falling animation so while the character's falling um, ignore move input and direction change because this is a cutscene the character cannot be controlled by the player. Uh, so I have it wait a certain amount of time and then I have it execute my test dummy's death. So the NPC you land on is actually just a dummy that only dies basically um, and then it goes to the next one when it touches the ground is basically what I have here so when it touches the ground it's going to execute the roll so I have it go to a new motion because we need it to do to do the animation of rolling and then uh, in the roll again no movement or direction change and then I have it do the roll this is the same thing I have in my actual role, um, except this one I just remade it because again we don't want the player to have control so we can't go to this role. And then after uh, motion place to end, because this is just an animation that I need it to do, once the animation is done we can go to the next phase which is looking back and saying the message. Again, no move input, no direction change. Um, here we have display direction because we want it to turn left because uh, that's where the body is. So I have display direction equal to 70. Wait a quarter of a second. Show text. What a landing. Then uh, basically I have this input after a certain time passes one second and you push any of these buttons you go to idle. So basically what this means is after one second and any button is pushed the text will go away and the player will have control because idle is the normal state, right? So uh, just make sure if you use like show text uh, you want it to have no time limit so it stays there until they do something and hide on object chain, object action change so that way, once the player pushes the button, it'll automatically go away and it will go to idle, which is here. And this is a shortcut. You just right click, um, create shortcuts, and then that way you can uh, just put this in there. So that's super simple. The um, Shortcut doesn't actually go in the group. I just have it sitting here. 
Um, so that's basically how you do a cutscene. You have to basically make actions that uh, control the character for them. Um, and then again, each animation has to be separate. But let's say you were having the player like, I don't know, walk back and forth or something, then you could uh, do this slightly differently. Or if the player is just talking, you could just do a bunch of show text with weights or after um, if you need like button presses then each one would have to be a separate action because you have to have a link that says when you push a button um, and then the only other difference for other people if you're making a cutscene is um, obviously this one is called by default because this is my default action in the scene but if you wanted to call a cutscene, uh, you would simply have to do something like, um, like for my attack, it's a button press, right? And then you would just do a execute object action, which is here, and then object self, because it's the player object, and then I could do BC falling, which is my, the beginning of my cutscene. So that's how you would do it. Um, it's best to do it in the player object, in my opinion, because that's probably what you're going to be moving for the most part. But you can also cut it up into different objects. So if you have a NPC object that is going to be doing stuff, you can just use execute um, object action like I did here and just have it do uh, actions. So depending on what you're moving, it could be better to have here or there, but I like it in the player because it will stop the player from moving, which is what we want because it's a cutscene. So you don't want the player walking around in the background while you have stuff going on, right? So if you have it in the player object, you can ignore move input and direction change and have all your other actions branch off from here. So if I had a second cutscene, all I would need to do, I would make a new group box, call it cutscene 2, and then we could add actions to this one. So, and then this one I would call, just like execute object action, say when you talk to an NPC in that NPC object, when the player talks to them, which I've covered in a different uh, tutorial, you could execute object action, have it call whatever the first action here in cutscene 2 is, and then it would, you know, be like dominoes. From there, it would control the player, it would do all the things. So that's the easiest way to do a cutscene. The most annoying part you're going to run into when doing cutscenes is making sure everything, one, is timed correctly and two moves and animates correctly because you have to manually do it obviously you can't I mean you could make animations uh, in the animations tab you could go to your player and you could make this long animation and have it you know do everything here and just do a, a motion like this and just have it do you know the animation of the cutscene depending what the cutscene is so like if you have um, say you have the player jumping up and down and then they fall down instead of having multiple motions you could have one big long animation that does that and then you just play the animation and then wait X time or um, like this one if motion animation plays to end you could do stuff like that so you don't have to manually use stuff like move towards if you want to do it that way but I already have all these actions in the game so it just it's so much easier for me to just copy and paste that instead of actually doing a full-on animation here you know so depending on what you're doing you would do it like this or you could do it via animations as long as it's something like in your game then it should be fairly easy because your player most likely won't be doing anything that they can't do outside of the game um, so 
that's pretty much how I would do it. Um, I mean, it's kind of vague, but I mean, it pretty much covers how to do it. You just need to make actions that do the animation you want and stop the player from controlling it. It basically boils down to that. Um, so if you have any questions, just let me know. Leave a comment. I will help you. And uh, thanks for watching. Leave a like if this helped you. Leave a dislike if you're heartless. And that's going to do it. See you guys next time.